We're going to start by testing our gauge so we can make sure our socks will fit. Start with our setup bonnet. You hang every other ring and I go all the way around all of the open needles that I can reach. If you don't have a setup bonnet, then you can use just a, a tube of scrap knitting. And there's another video on our YouTube channel for how to do that. So there I've hung all of them that I can reach easily. Now I'm going to crank my handle so that the first needle that has a split ring on it is right at the break in the yarn feeder. Then I'm going to load my project yarn into my yarn feeder. So this time we're not casting on with waist yarn. When we're knitting a swatch, you don't have to do the waist yarn step. You can just cast on directly with the yarn that you're measuring. And then, so I've dropped my yarn down in. I fed it through the yarn feeder. I'm adding my medium weight. I'm going to crank the first few to make sure they start catching. They did. And then I'll stop and hang the rest of the rings. There we go. And that was it. You go around one time, make sure they caught. Mine did. So now this is the time when you want to adjust the tension and it's by far the easiest to start with looser tension and work tighter than the other way around. If you start too tight and have to make it quite a bit looser, it's best just to take the whole project off the machine and go again because it's um, it takes a lot, a lot of rows for it to really loosen back up and you won't get an accurate measurement. It is okay to go looser and then tighter is just fine. So I usually start uh, well, I know on, on my machine and the yarn I usually use that somewhere between the third and fourth mark is probably about right. So I have mine right now exactly on the, the third mark. Thought it might be helpful to show you what I meant by that. So this top of the bar is set right at the third mark from the top. And I try to make it as even as possible. And then both of these knobs I, I make sure are really tight so it doesn't move while I'm cranking. So I'm gonna crank a few rows and just see how the tension looks. If it looks too loose, if it looks too tight. This is a little on the loose side, but that would probably be okay. Another thing to check is that the back of the stitches are just coming off the back of the cylinder. For sure, make sure that your stitches are not riding up on the needles. That, makes sure, that means that your tension is too tight. So if you wanted to adjust the tension, you could go ahead and do that now and then crank a few rows, make sure you're happy with it. Once you are happy with the tension and how it just looks on the machine to your eye, then turn on your row counter, reset it and crank 50 rows. There I am at 50 rows. So I'm going to unthread my yarn, just let it fall in the center and then hold at the bottom while I crank to remove my swatch. And then you can go ahead and drop out your soft weight. To make sure you'll, your socks will fit, you need to start by measuring the length of the foot. So you can do that, let's say you're making gift socks for someone and you know they wear a size eight shoe, you can just look online and see how many inches their foot is likely to be based on an eight inch shoe. And in our sock pattern, we give you a link to a chart that will tell you that. Or you can actually trace the person's foot. So you'll have them stand up on a sheet of paper barefoot and then have them put their weight on the, the ball of the foot. And then as you trace, make sure the pencil is straight up and down as you, you go around. Try not to, to tip it either way, just straight up and down. And you'll end up with an outline kind of like this. 
one tip is we actually have these for everyone in our family and then we just keep these so like this might have my name on it or then i'll have one for you know dean i have one for bean i have one for my other kids i have one for my husband so as i want to make other socks for them i don't have to go back and measure their foot every time so that's your gift tip of the day you're then going to measure the longest part of the foot so here uh, the longest part of my foot is 10.25 inches and we're going to subtract out a quarter of an inch to account for the width of the pencil it's basically an eighth of an inch on each side so we're going to subtract out a quarter of an inch so my total foot length here would be 10 inches okay next you want to know how wide the foot is and there are two ways you can do that you can either measure the widest part of your drawing like this and really kind of like wiggle it around until you're sure it's the widest the widest part or you can take a, a tape measure a soft tape measure like this <clears throat> and measure around around the foot okay so either way then you usually subtract half an inch uh, from the measurement to get the because you want you want negative ease because you don't want your socks to be gaping you want them to be a little bit snug against your foot you want them to stretch a little bit so if you measured with a tape measure let's say you got eight and a half inches you would divide by two which is four and a quarter inches subtract half an inch for negative ease and you would get 3.75 inches and for me i know that i do like my socks to be between three and a half and 3.75 inches wide so um, that's how you do it if you go all the way around if you just measured it this way around um, then you've already done the divide by two and so you're just going to subtract for negative ease after you know what your target foot measurements are the next step is to measure the swatch that you just made first we're going to measure the width and remember not to do right down here at the bottom because that might be where you were still adjusting your tension so here closer to the top where it really seems to be settled in you smooth it out make sure it's laying flat don't tug it but just make sure it's nice and flat and then lay your ruler on top so mine this is coming up just short of 3.75 inches which i know is is great for for me for my foot so i would be happy with this and i would go ahead and use this as the tension for the cylinder if this is not right for you, if it's either too loose or too tight, you would need to rewind this swatch, cast on again, adjust your tension or even adjust your cylinder size if it's off quite a bit, crank another swatch and keep trying until you get it the width that you want. Okay, so that step's critical. There's no reason to go on until you get the width the way that you want it to be. Visit us at deanandbean.com and please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.